Welcome on my podcast. Today with me, I have a Shay. He is helping people to gain clarity, to build their business, balance all these areas, which I really love because I'm the same. You need to be able to balance all the areas in your life in order to be happy and really experience the life fulfillment. And at the end of the video, if you stick to the end, he's having also some amazing tips to share, which can help you to accelerate your business. Hi, Shay. Welcome uh, on my another episode of my podcast. Hi. Thank you, Vitas. Hi. And I'm excited to be here as well. Thank you very much for taking the time of your day uh, during the Christmas time, and uh, you are here. We'll just start with the with the questions regarding this. So, can you tell us what is it you do? Where are you based? You know, what is a little bit of your background so we can get to know you a little bit more? Okay, so um, like you rightly said, I'm Shay. Um, I'm the learning leadership growth um, enabler and a learning and development uh, specialist. I help individuals, I help organizations to discover clarity and become the very best versions of themselves through coaching and training interventions. And um, there are several of these interventions that I get to run. I have coaching programs, I have training programs, I have conferences, webinars, and all of those things to help people. And our ultimate vision is to make the world a much better place to live in. And there are several ways in which uh, we get to, you know, deal with that, to make our world a much better place to live in. That's the ultimate thing. Whatever it is that we do, that's all it is that we're, we're trying to do. And I'm currently based here in Dublin, Ireland, and um, I've been here for about two years, and it's been uh, it's been a wonderful time altogether. So that's that's me in a nutshell. Maybe in the course of our conversation, I will share a bit more about myself. Uh, thank you very much for that for that info. So when you mentioned that you live in Ireland for two years, so where did you move from? Where where is it you lived before? Okay, so I'm from Nigeria. I, I lived in Lagos, Nigeria, for the most part of my life. Um, and in 2021, there about, I had to relocate for family reasons. Um, Ireland was never a destination of choice. I never thought of moving to Ireland. Um, but somehow I found myself in Ireland. Uh, my wife got a job here. She wanted to take it. And I wanted to be a supportive husband as well. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't want the family separated. So I decided to, you know, move here to Ireland as well. And um, all this while, um, while I say to people, I, ha- I have two jobs, right? I have a nine to five and I have a five to nine. Now, my nine to five job is I'm a primary school teacher, right? I've been teaching in a primary school for over, over 14 years now. But my five to nine is what I just, what I talked about earlier, which is my coaching, my training and all of that. So um, when I moved, when I moved into Ireland in 2021, October 2021, they're about just at the end of the pandemic, so to say, things were just getting back to normal. And I got into Ireland, right? And... I was, you know, I mean, I intended to continue what I was doing here, which is as a primary school teacher and my coaching and training and all of that. And I was told, you know what, it's practically impossible for you to become a primary school teacher in Ireland. And I I was was concerned. What do you mean by that? And, you know, I I, because my first degree was in statistics, so I do a lot of work in terms of statistics and all of that. So I, I looked I looked up the statistics in Ireland and I discovered that. 99% 99% of primary school teachers in Ireland are either white, Irish, or female. 99%. So what that meant was I had a less than 1% chance of becoming a primary school teacher in Ireland. Now, prior to this time, I had been coaching and training people on how to accelerate growth in their careers and businesses and all of that. So I felt, you know what, it was time for me to practice what it is I preach. I've said to people, I mean, there's nothing impossible for you to achieve and all of that. So I got in October 2021. And I decided to pursue that's what I was told that was impossible to achieve. Yeah, I had several options. Um, like I said, I'm a learning and development specialist. I have an advanced diploma in learning and development from CIPD in the UK and all of that. So I had several options, but I wanted to do that that I was told that was impossible. So uh, I, I pursued that to become a primary school teacher in Ireland. By December, which is a couple of about two, three months after I moved into the country, I got my first job as a primary school teacher in code, even though I didn't have a license to practice in the country. But I was like, that's a good start. I mean, I got a job without having a license. <laughs> that's a good, good start. And then um, I didn't I pursued further. By February of the same of, of the next year, which is last year, by February last year, some schools had approached me and said, you know what, well, we want you, we want you to work with us. Unfortunately, you don't have a license. So you can work with us, however. You won't be able to pay your full salary because you don't have a license to work and all of that. I'm like, okay, fine. I mean, let's 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 go. I mean, that's a, taking a step a step further. I mean, this was me that I was told it was impossible for me to get into teaching in primary school. So less than six months after I got into Ireland, I had started teaching in primary schools as a non-qualified teacher, as I was called. 
Um, mm. By May of the, of the same year, I had received my full license. I got a full, I got a contract with the Department of Education. Um, recently received a permanent contract with the Department of Education. So literally what had, what had taken people, what had, you know, some people had tried for years and had not been able to get into that sector. I mean, I've been able to do that in a couple of months and all of that. Um, you know, and it's very interesting because earlier this year, uh, I was in a, I was in a congress for educators in Ireland. All I mean, most of educators in Ireland come together every year for a congress, and I was in that congress this year, and it was a congress of over a thousand people, right? And incidentally, I was the only teacher of color in that congress. As a matter of fact, I had RTE do an RTE is the national um, news agency here in Ireland. They had to do an article about me because that was the first time a teacher of color had been in that congress in over 155 years that's an annual congress that's been taking place for 155 years and had never been a teacher of color in it um right now i get to work with universities native university uh Marino institute on how to create diversity in the teaching profession here i've had conversations with the minister of education as well on the same thing and that's a, a cause that i'm championing which is what i'm very passionate about how to develop leadership capacity especially of the minority community so that's kind of my, my story so far amazing it's an incredible story actually and when you when you mentioned that you know some 99 percent chance that or the 99 percent of people who are you know white and things like that and you have just one less than a one percent chance to get to that and you did so and some people they didn't so what do you think was the difference between you and some and other people they wanted to do the same but they wouldn't succeed well okay there are several factors that cause that right because i mean i work with people everything but one of the critical things was which was the first thing was the mindset mm -hmm. now when i came in like i said and they had said to me this is what you can do this is what you can't do if i had a fixed kind of mindset i would have submitted to some of those things that they had said but my mindset was so solid that i mean i don't believe anything is impossible it may not have been achieved, maybe I'm going to be the first to achieve it. So even though as at the time I stepped out of that journey to achieve that, I had no idea what it is I was going to do or how there was nobody that had done it. I, had, I searched around, I went on the internet, I looked around for people that had achieved that to find out from them, what did you do? I didn't find any. So there was nobody I could reference that this is how it could be done. I had no idea how it could be done, but I just had the mindset it can be done. Mm -hmm. So the first and most important thing is the mindset. And that's why when I'm working with people, one of the very first things I talk about is the mindset. We need to deal with the mindset because if the mindset is not right, there's very little we can do on that. I mean, the, the mindset I can say to people, it's like, you know, you have a computer, right? You have maybe an iPhone or whatever. As fantastic as the iPhone, maybe iPhone 15 and all of that, that's like, you know, it has like maybe 24 megapixels. It has like a, a, a one gig memory. That's, that's fine. But that iPhone also has a software. Now, as fantastic as the hardware, the, the camera, the and all of that, as fantastic as that is, if the software is corrupt, that phone is as good as useless. Yeah. The mindset is like the software of us. So a lot of people are packaged with talent, giftings, and all of that. But because they have the wrong mindset, they submit to certain things that are not ideal for them. So that's the first place to start if I was going to talk about why people have not been able to achieve that. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's very good that you are sharing that because I totally agree that with anything we want to achieve, if you would listen what they told you, like, you know, it's impossible. It's just one one then less than 1% chance to achieve that. So forget about it. So if you would say like, ah, oh, that's true. So you wouldn't get there, right? Because you said like, no, I will achieve that anyway. It doesn't matter. You know, if I'll be the first and you were the first after 150 years on the Congress, you know, so it's a big achievement. And I think this is the message what people need to hear because very often people, you know, they try something for a little bit, but after it doesn't work, they just give up because somebody else told them that it's not possible because they are not working on themselves, right? That's it. That's it. So uh, you have to believe in yourself, have the right mindset, and then all the other strategies. There's there several other things that come into place, but if the mindset is not in place, then whatever strategies you're trying to implement will just fall by the wayside. Mm. Okay. So at the moment, so you have achieved that. So now you are the teacher at the primary school. Yeah. Yes, I am. Okay. So this is your nine to five. And after your, you know, nine to five, you have also five to nine job you mentioned. Yeah. So this is. Yeah. 
coaching, training, your webinars, events. So tell me a little bit more about that, you know, because you mentioned that you are focusing on helping companies. Do you help companies and also like uh, individuals or is it just for uh, companies? How, how does it work? Okay, so we help uh, individuals and organizations. So um, we have both, both individuals and corporates and all of that. And uh, what we help them to do is, like I said, discover clarity and become better versions or become more profitable and more productive. Um, instead, I'm also a business consultant as well. I have an MBA, especially in my, and, and major in marketing. So I help in uh, companies. And some of the things that we do, we have webinars, we have conferences, um, we have programs, leadership programs that are um, tailored towards uh, you know middle and top leadership um, of, of, of the societies and what what we always talk about when i'm talking about um leadership i'm very particular about minority societies because they are the people that really don't have a voice at the table and when we talk about that there are always four questions i ask in that case first question is who is at the table now the table literally means you know at the table of opportunities at the table of you know employment at the, at the table and all of that so who is at the table who is not at the table? That's the, those are the people I'm particular about. Now, why are these people not at the table? But the most important question I ask is, what can we do to get these people to the table? So like that, let's say that table is a table of opportunities. So there's an opportunity for a leadership position. Who are the people that are at that table of the opportunities? Who are the people that have access to that table of opportunities? That's the most important thing for me. Now, how do I ensure that we have the right people at that table? That's what I. That's where I come in with capacity development, leadership capacity development, and all of that. Um, we do those. We have trainings that we get to run. We have free conferences that we get to run. We have um. So like the conference that I was talking about, we have the leadership conference, the impact leadership conference. That's what it's called. Uh, it started off in person here in Dublin. Now I've been. I mean, I've been doing conferences for several years since 2016. I've been holding conferences, but I started off with conferences in education because I mean that, that's that's a sector that I, I'm really passionate about. I still work in the education sector, but I've now broad I've now broadened my spe my spectrum into other areas of business consulting and all of that. So um, the the Impact Leadership Conference started off virtually, especially during the pandemic. A lot of people were struggling to get get business going, and that's where we started that. And then when I got into Ireland, like I said, after a couple of of months here, and I achieved a couple of things that people had said was impossible to achieve and I realized you know what a lot of people here in Ireland and even in this part of the world need to be helped as well so I decided to host the first in-person conference here in Ireland and that was in the in the month of September 2022 that was last year September 2022 and it was a hugely attended event I had um mayors speak at the event I had I had politicians I had different people from different walks of life speak at the event it was a well attended event and all of that and based on the successes and the impact not just the numbers and all of that but the impact created because when you when you have people in your conferences and you can see true impacts from when they, before they came and after they came and the, the, a lot of things that have changed in their lives I realized you know what a lot more people need to have uh, these conferences as well. So like I said, it started in Dublin in 2022 and then we set a target for ourselves it's just like every organization. I mean, and it's an organization it needs to grow. So we decided to grow the conference. So this year of 2023, we decided to take the conference to three different locations, even though they are hybrid conferences, right? So we host them in a particular location, but we have people that join from different parts of the world, which is very, which is a unique style to the conference. Um, so this year we set a target for ourselves to increase our locations to three different locations. So we had one in London in the month of February and then we had another one in Dublin in July and the last one we had is was in Scotland in Glasgow in November. So we have three conferences this year, hugely successful conferences and all of that. And based on that, we have even set a higher target for ourselves next year. Now we intended to go to five locations next year um, in the course of, of this year, especially after the success of the Glasgow con con um, conference. Some people had sp spoken to us, you know what, we love what it is that you're doing. We love the impact you're creating. Would you mind bringing your conferences to our location? And so two people have you know, invited us to bring the conferences to their location. So right now we have seven locations that we're going to be working with, um, four in the UK and three here in Ireland. So we're going to be in Manchester in, in the month of February. Incidentally, you will be there in Manchester as well. We're going to be there in Manchester in February. We're going to be in Birmingham in April. We're going to be in Liverpool in um, in May. We're going to be in Dublin in July. We're going to be in London. We're going to be in Belfast. We're going to be in Cork here as well. So those are the places that are taking the conferences to next year. It's been a hugely successful conference and um, you know, uh, we look forward to many more transformations through the conferences. Okay.
Okay, amazing. Uh, thank you very much for sharing that because, as you mentioned, I'll attend the uh, your conference in Manchester, which is in the 17th of February, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And, um, yeah, and, uh, and you gave me the opportunity to, to speak on the stage. So thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And I think it's very important. Uh, I already invite some people actually to Manchester. I know one of my clients signed up already. She she said she's coming, which is great. <laughs> and wow. uh, and I think it's very important because when you talk about before about the mindset, like, you know, people need to start over there when they want to achieve something. So very often, like what I see, like people are busy with their life, right? They are, you know, working or something is happening and they don't have the time to focus on themselves. It's sometimes very difficult if you are from, you know, going to, you are from the job state, you are a worker after you are at home, you are a dad or mom or parent, whatever it is. Sometimes people are struggling to find the time for themselves. So that's where I see the power of these events and conferences and seminars. I really like to come to these, not only this time as a speaker, but also as an attendee myself, because when you are there, you are there like usually half day or full day or multiple days. So you have this time to think for yourself, what is it you want to achieve in life or what is it you want to do? And though this environment, these people who are there, they can really help you to boost that process. Am I right? Yes, you're very correct. And, and in fact, you've mentioned quite a number of important things there. So one of the things I talk to people about is our conferences are designed to help you achieve a number of things. One of them is, yes, you get a lot of information in the conferences. I mean, you, the level of success you achieve in life is directly proportional to the information that is available to your disposal for time. So yes, you get a lot of information. You get a lot of inspiration from those conferences as well. By the time you sit there and listen to the st success stories of other people, you have some level of inspiration to go um, you know, to, to do to, to do yours as well. You get what what I call impartation as well. You know, there's there's in science is what's called osmosis and diffusion. Just by being in the room with people that have achieved certain things, you get to tap certain things from them as well. Now you also get introductions. There are certain people that you're going to be meeting on that day. So, for example, it was at an event that we got to meet. It was an introduction that we had. I mean, there was there was someone that spoke at the last conference in, in Glasgow, right? This, this is someone that I met him in my London conference. And I said to him, oh, I think... Now, his old story is quite interesting as well because he's someone that they had said to him, you can never be a public speaker because he was a stammer. And they had told him you can never be a public speaker. I met him in my London conference. He came for my London conference and I spoke to him, you know what? I believe you can be a public speaker. My next conference is gonna be in Glasgow and I want you to come and speak at the conference because at that time we had planned the Dublin conference and all of that. It seemed crazy, right? And he came to the Dublin, to the Glasgow conference to speak at the conference. And he was so impactful in the conference. As soon as he was done at the conference, right there and then, he met someone that gave him a pay key to another speaking engagement in London. Now, this is someone that had told, you know what, you can never be a public speaker. He had never spoken in public before. I pulled him to speak at that conference. He met someone at that conference that pulled him to speak somewhere else for a huge sum of money. Now, that's introduction. So those are the kinds of things you get from those kinds of meetings, from the kinds of conferences and all of that. And you, can, you mentioned something there that, you know, some people are, you know, you're trying to balance with work life and all of that, which is something I'm very, very passionate about. That's why we help people to accelerate growth in three major areas, in careers, in businesses and in personal lives because oftentimes i've seen people that are successful in careers and their businesses but their personal lives are not as successful the home front is not as successful as, as to work from that's not what i mean I, I call that defective success i want the kind of success that is total it's 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 encompassing so we get to focus on all of those and we carefully select our speakers such that we have people that speak about businesses we have people that speak about careers but we must also have people that also speak about lives and how to also balance i mean i call it having a life while making a living some people focus on making a living but forget about the life that they have i mean when you stop when you're done making a living when you, you retire and all of that you go back to having your life so we want to ensure that while you're making a living you still have a life which is very important and what we try to achieve in all our conferences yeah 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 absolutely yeah yeah i totally agree uh just no it's not the coincidence that very first book i wrote uh, it was just a gift for my people to come to my mastermind it's called balancing family and financial freedom because mm -hmm. it was to do with property business but you know to to balance those things is not just focusing on one thing and uh, and after not focusing on the others i see a lot of people they are you know very successful in business but when you ask them like you know about their personal life it's not they are not very happy about their 
because they forgot about that on the way. So, you know, I will always saying like, you know, let's say I would like to also be a public speaker and speak. But the thing is, you know, I'd rather take me five years and still have a family and loved ones than to do it quickly in one year, but forget about everybody else, right? That's very true. Also, when you mentioned about these introductions, uh, yeah, that's very true as well, because you never know who you're going to meet. So that's that's where it's powerful also in the in my business, but I do like a property a lot. So in like those networking events, you meet people, you make new connections. Like we met in October on the uh, Professional Speaking uh, Association Summit, and uh, I was speaking with one of your friends and he told me about you. We didn't even have a chance to speak by, back then because it was 200 people. But he said that you are running events and you might be open to take me as a speaker. And that's how we connected. And that's why I'm coming to your Manchester event, right? If I would never yes. come there, I would never uh, have the opportunity to uh, firstly met you and after speak uh, for you over there. That's it. That's it. Um, in fact, on one of my courses, because I, I run several programs, on one of my programs, that's actually one of the topics and models that we get to deal with. I mean, in networking and all of that, it's very, very vital. You know, um, there's something called the five, the rule, the five rule where between yourself and anybody it is that you want to meet in this world, they're just five connections away. I mean, so what that means is if I want to meet, say, Obama tomorrow, there's someone that I know that knows someone that knows someone that knows someone that knows Obama. That's just it. Now, you just might be, you may not, you know, you may not know, the first connection might be that person that you meet in that room. It's very, very critical. I mean, it's so, there are so many things you can talk about, you know, intro, the, the introduction and all of that. You know, um, you said you're, you're, you're an average of the five people you spend your most time with. I mean, you're, when you meet people, those people you're, you're, you're in the room with, that's an average of who you who you are in terms of your network, in terms of your knowledge, your understanding, and all of that. So, how do you get to constantly place yourself in the midst of people that you know would do your network a lot more good? I mean, like you said, your network is your net worth, and so it, it, it's very very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's very good. I never heard that that you know if you want to meet someone like that is just five connections away. Oh yes, it's, <laughs> it's very it's good. The, yeah. It's called the the five the rule of five. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, because when uh, I'm just, for example, yeah, I'll give you an idea. So I've been on the Unleash the Power Within with Tony Robbins in July, and in Birmingham, and uh, we have signed up for this advanced uh, training, like a master university. And I'm thinking, like, okay, so you know, I would like to meet Tony Robbins in person. I would like to meet him one day, you know, because obviously he was there was twelve thousand people. It was very far away. It's not like you know you come to him. But after when you are speaking, it's like, yeah, he's just five connections away. But once we sign up for that university, for example, so there was a guy who was also a speaker, Scott, and you could have a one-to-one -one conversation with him, which is fine. And actually, he's working for him, so they have a connection. So it was only two connections from Tony Robbins. It's simple. <laughs> Just two connections, and who would have imagined that? So all you needed to do was identify the first connection that knows the next connection and all of that. It's a maximum of five connections, whoever it is you want to meet. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I think for whoever is watching, I mean, if you want to start your business or if you want to basically, you know, develop yourself and you are struggling with finding difficult to find those people. So I would really want to invite you to come for the 17th of February to Manchester to the event. The event if I'm not mistaken, it's for free, right? Yes, it is absolutely free. I mean, you don't need to bother. It's it's now it is free, but it's not cheap. We we, we don't compromise on standards and excellence, but we give it for free because we want everybody. Like we said, our desire is to help as many people make our world a much better place to live in, and our, our focus are you know people from the minority societies and all of that. We want everybody to be a part of it. We don't want to limit anybody because of the cost and all of that. It costs a lot, but we're giving it out for free. And just in case, so if you are in and around Manchester and you can make it down, even if you are not around Manchester, I mean, the last the last conference we had in Glasgow, we had a lot of people that flew in for it. Uh, there's a lady I've been speaking with. She's flying in from Bangladesh for the Manchester conference. I mean, herself and her family are flying in. She's booked her hotel and all of that already for the Manchester conference. Incidentally, she booked a hotel in the venue of, of the conference we're going to have just so that she don't want to be 
staying far, far away from that. And in the Glasgow conference we had, we had a lot of people flew in for that as well. So if you are in and around Manchester or you can fly down for that event, fantastic, please do that. But just in case you're listening from a part of the world where you won't be able to make it in person, don't worry, we got you covered as well. It's a, it's a hybrid event, so we're going to be able to join us virtually as well. You're going to be able to participate, you're going to be able to ask the questions and all of that. So it's not just going to be, you know, you're just going to be watching something, you're going to actually participate and get involved in the conference as well. Yeah, 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 amazing. So yeah, I'll definitely include the link in the description in that video. So if people want to register, they can. Okay, so that's regarding the conference. We talk about, you know, the number one thing it's with everybody's always the mindset, after surrounding yourself with the people like who you want to become, like you said, like your top five people around you, that's who you are. So if you want to change something, it's very good to come to those events like what you are running or any other events where, you know, you can meet those people. So you are helping individuals and companies. So also you are doing five events next year or seven, actually, you mentioned seven. seven. And what is it like? Is it like your goal or some vision for yourself and, you know, your business or your family? What is it you would like to be in the in the future? Let's say if you have any ideas like five, 10 years, you have like a bigger vision for something like that. All right. So um, one of the visions we have as an organization is to reach five million people in the next three years. Mm -hmm. We want to reach to be able to empower either directly or indirectly empower five million people in the next three years. Yes, that's that's a, a you know, a tough call, but it's it's something we're planning to do. That's why we're planning to take our conferences to so more people, reach larger audiences and all of that. So that's one of the things that we want to do um, in, in the next in the next couple of years. Okay. that's uh, it's incredible goal. <laughs> five million. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. I hope I can help with that somehow. <laughs> and um, okay, so also, if there is someone is like struggling or you know is like in between, you know, you definitely have a clients like that. You know, before they sign up for your training or coaching, you know, people are thinking like, is it really worth doing it, or do I rather should stay in my regular job and just like you know, just live the life for the next 30 years and don't try anything new. Maybe they have some objections in their head uh, or maybe they started the business a little bit, but it's not working as they would want to. They want to scale it. They don't know how. Is there any, I don't know, few tips what you would want to share with people what can help them? You mentioned the mindset. So that's the one. What else you could share which can help people to, you know, stand up and just start doing and really progressing. Okay, so well, there are a couple of things that um, you know that are involved in success in life. And I say to people, what I don't, whatever it is, you define success as for you. It's it's up to you. I mean, I can't define success for you, but whatever success it is you have is something that should help you achieve some level of freedom. Now, freedom, maybe financial freedom, time freedom, you know, whatever. That level of freedom and a number of things. One of them we talked about the mindset. Another very important thing which we kind of kind of touched up on is your network. Okay, like I said, your network is your net worth. Um, one of the other vital things I want to talk about, <clears throat> which is something I'm passionate about, excuse me, is leadership. Now, when we talk about leadership, a lot of people misunderstand the concept of leadership because I remember I was inviting someone some time back. Um, for one of our conferences and because it's called the impact leadership conference and she said to me oh I'm, I'm not a leader so it's not for me and I, I had to sit her down to take her through understand what leadership is all about leadership is actually influence now whatever goals it is you have whatever vision it is you have either for yourself or your business whatever so we're looking that's the first thing because you need to understand what what is your why what is your what is, what is the goal that you want to achieve why are you taking this journey that's the first thing that once you have the journey, you have because your 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 vision is where you want to go to. Now your mission is how you want to get there. So you have your vision statement, your mission statement, and your core values. So your mission, your vision statement is where you want to go to. Your mission statement is how you're going to get there, and your core values are your success standards. How you get get to measure on that journey to that place. Now you need to set up first of all have all of those either as individuals or as an organization. You know, I speak to people about having vision and all of that. And some people have a vision and mission statements and something. And some people say to me, well, I'm not an organization. And I say to them, do you know, seated inside of you, you have over 10 trillion cells 
in 72 organs. And we understand that a cell is a living organism in itself. So if you have 10 trillion cells, it's as good as having 10 trillion employees in 72 organs, which are like 72 different establishments. That's a conglomerate in itself. And you think you don't deserve goals for yourself? So just in case you're one of those that feels, you know what, I'm not an organization, I'm just an individual, I don't need my personal goals and, and mission and all of that. Please rethink that. You need all of those. What to have your goals, you have your mindset sort out. Now, when we're talking about leadership, leadership is influence. Whatever goal it is that you have, if it's a goal that you can achieve all by yourself, it's just a dream. Just go back, sleep again and begin to and think of something else. Because whatever goals it is that you have, it should be bigger, much bigger than you that you need people to help you achieve that goal. Now, how do you get to influence, in quote, influence people to help you achieve the goal? That is leadership because John Maxwell would always say leadership is influence. So for me to be able to get people to partner with me to achieve my goal. So for example, I have a goal of reaching 5 billion people. I'm partnering with you to be able to help me achieve that goal by speaking at my conference. That is leadership. I may not have, I may not be a positional leader in court. I may not be your leader as a, but I have influenced you to partner with me to achieve my goal. That is leadership. People need to understand that. So that's a critical part because in whatever goal, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, you are going to definitely work with people. How do you get to influence these people to help you achieve your goal while they are also achieving their goals? Because that's the thing, it needs to be mutually beneficial. As I'm trying to achieve my goal, they need to, you need to help them achieve their goals as well. Otherwise, it's, it's a parasitic relationship. We need to have a symbiotic relationship. You're helping me to achieve my goal. I'm helping you to achieve your goal. We are all happy. The world is a happy place to live in, which is our goal in the first place. That was well said. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank you very much for all these things what you mentioned, what you shared from your personal life to your business life. Uh, really excited about the conference in February and many other patients actually this year or no, next year. <laughs> it's still a few days to go. And uh, very nice to having you. I'm looking forward to meet you again in person in February in just one and a half months. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for having me. It's been nice having a chat with you.